bless this morning. What a blessing it is to be in the Lord's house today. Amen. Man, boy, I tell you, God has been so good to us. Amen. 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 I pray today, and I pray that God will have His way. Everything that is said and done. Amen. That we'll just mind Him. Amen. And uh, let the Lord uh, undertake and supply Amen, the very needs of the hour. You know, we've been over at the house and we've been studying, been reading. And uh, the Lord just sort of uh, changed roads in the middle of the stream. Amen. So we pray today that we'll just be very mindful of the things that uh, that God will uh, have us to say. Amen. And let the Lord penetrate our hearts and our lives. Amen. And let God do something. Uh, to be honest with you this morning, I don't know where this thing's going. I don't even know how to get started. Amen. But, uh, so you pray today. Before we, before we do anything, let us pray. Amen. Father, dear Lord, it's again God that we come to you with humble hearts. Thank you, Lord, today, God, for loving us. And Lord, we pray today, Father, that God, that would undertake and supply, Lord, the very needs of the hour. And God, as you look down today, Father, you see every soul, Lord, that is gathered in this place today. God, you know the hearts of every man, woman, boy, and girl, Lord, that's sitting in here. And Father, you know, Lord, what they stand in need of. God, we pray this morning, Father, that, Lord, you might help us. Lord, that we might be able to help someone today, Lord, to realize, God, that there's a God that loves them. Lord, that there's a God that will save. Father, we pray today, Lord, to touch the hearts of thy people. And God, whatever's accomplished, dear Lord and Father, we pray that, God, if we've done or said anything this week that would hinder this, Lord, that you would forgive us of it. God, make preaching and teaching easy. And Lord, Father, we thank you today, God, for loving us. And Lord, Father, just use this in a mighty, mighty way. And God, whatever's accomplished, dear Lord, will not fail. Father, to bow our head, God, and give you the praise and the honor and the glory, Father, for we ask it all. In Jesus' holy and precious name we do pray. And amen. 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 You notice we, uh, amen. <clears throat> if you got your Bible, let's go to the, uh, let's go over in the uh, first Thessalonians, Amen, chapter number five. And uh, be very much in prayer uh, as we read this verse of Scripture. Amen. Uh, chapter number 5 and verse number 9. And uh, it says, For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, if I put a thought upon this today, I'd like to use the thought just for a little while. Where are you going to be when the love runs out? Amen. Where are you, where are you going to be when the love stops? Amen. What kind of condition is your life going to be in when ever God looks down and says, Enough's enough. Amen. Amen. We live in a in a in a world today, and we live in a society today. And, and Peter said, he, uh, God said, it's not my will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And we're reminded and reminded and reminded in the scripture that God loves each and every one of us. Amen. Uh, John 3, 16, he said, For God so loved the world 
that He gave His only begotten Son, regardless of how evil and how corrupt, amen, that people are in this generation. God loves them. Amen. And that love cost God, His only Son, to die upon the cross. And Jesus come, amen, not to order us to be saved, amen, but for, to provide us a way that we could be saved. Amen. And boy, I tell you, I, I wonder sometimes in life, where are you going to be when the love runs out? Uh -huh. Amen. Boy, have you ever heard somebody uh, they'll get so fed up with the way that uh, our kids are living, or husbands are living, or wives are living, amen. And sometimes you can hear them say, I've had enough, amen. I've had my fill of it. I've taken all that I can take. Don't you imagine sometimes that whenever God looks down upon our life, amen, that God said, boy, I about had enough, amen. I have about went my living. I have about done everything that I'm going to do. Amen. It's almost time for a love to come to an end and let the judgment begin. Amen. Oh, Listen today. If you're here this morning, I guarantee you beyond the shadow of a doubt that God loves you. Amen. Amen. Does God love save you? No, it does not. Amen. You are not saved by God's love. You're saved because of what God's love done. Amen. It's sin is only begotten Son and to die upon the cross. Amen. You're saved by the grace Amen. of God. You're saved because there is a God in heaven that loves you. But one of these days, that love is going to run out. Amen. Amen. Come on, preacher. One of these days, God is going to say, I've had enough. Uh -huh. Amen. We read about law. Amen. Back over in the Old Testament. Amen. And how Lot set his eyes towards Sodom. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, there's a lot of people today got their eyes set towards Sodom. And amen. That's the reason they ain't no more faithful to the house of God and what they are. They got their eyes and their minds set. Amen. Set towards Sodom. Amen. They're enjoying the things of this old world and trying to live the Christian life at the same time. Man, I tell you, you can't walk both sides of the fence. Amen. Amen. And when God saves us, He will clean us up. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, He sent Abraham down into Sodom and Gomorrah to get Lot to come out. God sent Jesus Christ to die upon an old rugged cross Amen. to get us out and to put our feet upon the rock. Listen to that. Where are you going to be when the love stops? Amen. Amen. Where are you going to be when the love runs out? Amen. We read about the prodigal son. Amen. Over in the book of Luke. Amen. You'll find that that prodigal son went through various stages in his life. Amen. That the father never left the house. Amen. The father never left the house. He never left the homestead. It was the boy that kept getting deeper and deeper in trouble. Amen. It was the boy and they become disobedient. Might I tell you today, God ain't went anywhere. Amen. This evening, brother, I'm telling you, people say, I uh, call the house sometime. And they say, why does God give up all me? I said, hey, God ain't never left. Amen. He's still in the same place. He's always been. If there's any backing up, it's on our part. If there's any disobedience, it's on our part. If it's any getting out of the will of God, it's on our part. Uh, brother, I'm telling you today, and it's coming a time the love of God is going to run out. Amen. Amen. How would your children how would your children feel today? If you look down at your children and say, I don't love you anymore. Get out. I don't care anything about you. 
I don't want you around me. I don't want you near me. I just want you to leave. Now, boy, that breaks some hearts, would it? It would take an awful person to be able to do something like that and to be able to live with herself. But you know people do that every day. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. People do that every day. They take everything that they have and they spend it on everything except taking care of the kids and then they expect somebody else to take care of the children. Amen. That's just like saying, I don't want you. Amen. Can you go somewhere else and live, please? Amen. Can't you imagine whenever God looks down upon the land today and His blessed Son lived and died for 33 and a half years and He died upon an old rugged cross and He went back to heaven that we might be able to have life and to have it more abundantly and God looks down upon our life he said father I have given them everything but you know what father they don't care a thing in the world about me they're going to do what they want to do how much longer have I got to love them amen how much longer have I got to reach out my hand to a lost and a dying a generation where are you going to be when the love runs out amen where are you going to be when this love and God? Where are you going to be at when this love and God all at once goes into action, into judgment? They may see the children that lived down in Sodom and Gomorrah, they was wicked. And you might say, preacher, it ain't like that today. The Bible says as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. This scene of brother, I tell you, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, we tell it just like it is. It was full of homosexuals. It was full of lesbians. Amen. This scene of they was doing every ungodly thing in the world. And God got sick and tired of it. Did he love them? He sure did. He even sent Abraham down in there. Amen. To carry the gospel one last time. Amen. Oh, but boy, whenever they failed to heed his call, guess what? God's love stopped. Amen. God's love stopped. He got lot up out of the city. God said, I'm done. I'm done. Just like He turned His back on Jesus. When Jesus hung up on the cross, God turned His back up on Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. He looked up into the heavens. He said, now that I got lot out of there, send the fire. Amen. And that fire fell. And the Bible said that they stood on the mountains of the plain and they watched the smoke go up. Amen. As a, a smoke ascended up in the heaven. Amen. Listen today. God ain't always going to be a God of love. Amen. He is going to be a God of judgment. Amen. And might I tell you today, people in America are pushing the buttons. Amen. You worry about the atomic bomb. You ought to be worried about the atomic God. Because God can do anything and He wants to anytime He wants Amen. to do it. Listen today, honey. It is time we pay heed to the Word of God. Where are you going to be when the love runs out? Where are you going to be when God's mercy comes to an end? Don't you realize that whenever Jesus comes back and claims His church and His church arises, that there'll be more people praying then than they've ever prayed in their life. Don't you realize that the habits of hell today, amen, are praying above everything else? Don't you realize in the pits of hell there are people screaming and a crying and a wanting to get out? God said in the Thessalonians, He said, it's not my will you go there in the first place. Amen. He said, because I had not appointed you to the wrath of God. But I have appointed you to obtain salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother, I'm telling you today, it says that God, everybody you talk to, God's a loving God. 
Everybody you talk to, God's going to have mercy on me. Everybody you talk to, I don't believe God would do something terrible like that because He's a loving God. <coughs> Amen. But might I tell you today, let's look at the other side of God. Amen. Let's look and see what the other side of God is all about. Let's look and see when the day of judgment has done already been cast upon us. Amen. And let's see what God is all about. I don't hear Him talking to anybody at the white throne judgment. Hey, I'm going to give you a minute to repent. I don't hear Him say or telling anybody that's left behind after the church that is called up out of here. I don't hear Him say anywhere in the Scripture, well, the church is gone, but I will give you another chance to repent. Uh -huh. <clears throat> See, when judgment falls, that judgment is falling upon a people that is due judgment. I know whenever I, whenever Ray was around and we was raising him, amen, boy, I tell you what, you know what, we had rules in our house. We had rules in our house. And if he didn't follow them rules, it didn't matter how old he was. Amen. If he lived in under my roof, he Amen. done what I said. Amen. Amen. Because I was the one paying the bills. Guess what? If you're going to live in under God's roof, you're going to do what God says. Amen. And you're going to live the way that God says to live. And if you don't, you ain't living under his roof. Because one of these days, judgment is going to set in. Amen. The Bible said in the book of John, He said, Behold the manner of love. What manner of love God has shown upon us that we might be able to be called the sons of God. You can, you can be called the child of God today if you let God get into your life. Amen. The prodigal son the man had two sons. The youngest one come to him and said, Father, I want my share. I want my share. I'm going to leave home. I'm going to live the way I want to. I'm going to do the things that I want to. There's some living that I want to do. And underneath your rule, I, underneath your roof, I'm not permitted to live like that. So I want my share. Amen. If you'll notice, when that boy left his father's house, every step that he took took him deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the things of this old world, into sin. Amen. And he wound up at the pig pen. Amen. Might I tell you today, honey, the longer you stay out of the house of God, and the further you get out of the will of God, and the lower you fall, and more you're not even classified as a child of God. God. Amen. Amen. Wake up and smell the coffee. One of these days, love is going to run out. Amen. One of these days, God is going to say, I've had enough. One of these days, God is going to shut the door to mercy. One of these days, God is going to close the door and mercy is going to come to an end. Amen. One of these days, we're going to stand before a God who's got eyes as flaming fire, feet as brass. Amen. And boy, He's going to stand there in judgment. Amen. He's going to stand there in judgment. And He's going to cast judgment upon us. And brother, I tell you this evening, when God passes judgment up on us. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. Right. Ain't a thing in the world I can do about it. When God declares you lost, you're lost. When God tells you, Amen, they ain't no more mercy, they ain't no more mercy. Amen. Amen. When God says you done come down to the end of your road and they ain't nothing ahead of you but judgment, guess what? They ain't nothing ahead of you but judgment. Amen. 
And when God looks through that old book, amen, and your name ain't found written on the inside, Come on, amen, he's going to say, depart from me, Come you on. workers of iniquity, and be cast into the lake of fire uh, forevermore, never to be coming out. That is the God that we serve in reality. And uh, today he's a loving God, and uh, tomorrow he might be a God of judgment. Amen. 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 But one of these days, one of these days, he just gets tired of fooling me. Amen. One of these days, he said, I've sent message after message after message after message after message. It's been like water on a duck's back. It hits the top of their head and it rolls off and it ain't a door but a bit of good. And God says, I'm done. He said, I've called and they have slammed the door in my face so many times. He said, I'm done calling. You know, I try, I, I, I'm gracious. I try to call people, amen, when they're not in the church. Amen, if they're missing church, I try to call. But if I try to call them three or four weeks in a row and they don't ever answer my telephone, that's a pretty doggone good hit. They don't want to talk to me. Amen. 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 So you know what I do? I just wait for them to call me. Because sooner or later, Sooner or later, the bottom will fall out. Uh -huh. Tragedy will set in. That's right, preacher. Come on. Problems arise in a hole. Amen. Then that phone will go to ring it off of the hook. <laughs> Say, preacher, I need a little bit of help. Uh -huh. Preacher, I need a little bit of help. You know what I've been tempted to tell some of them? Well, if you needed a little bit of help, why didn't you pick up the telephone about three weeks ago? Uh -huh. <clears throat> <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't be going through what you're going through right now. That's right. See, there's a time that the love is going to stop. I want to ask you, where would you be at in the boat of life right now oh. if God just quit loving you? Oh. On the bottom. Amen. How would you feel today if you left out of here and knowing that God wasn't going to love you anymore, that He wasn't going to speak to you, that He wasn't going to call you, that He wasn't going to give you the invitation to come and to be saved. Hey Amen. Listen today. God is not only a God of love, but He's a God of judgment. Amen. God is in the love and the mercy, grace, the stage of salvation today. But tomorrow, He could be the God of judgment. He could be the Christ that sits upon the great white throne. We put that play on here a few years ago. Amen. A brother Trey played that part and said, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew. And boy, I'm telling you what, He's going to tell it with a stern voice. Amen. 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 Everything Jesus does is true. Amen. Amen. His righteousness is truth. His judgment is truth. Amen. And He does that because He loves us. Amen. They say, Brother, I'm telling you today, if He let everything enter into heaven, the way everything enters into the church, we wouldn't be man no better off going to heaven than what we would be here. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Because you got people in the church who don't live right. You got people in the church. That's the biggest complaint I hear. I ain't going to church much of hypocrite. Mm -hmm. yep. Amen. You know what I told one person the other day? I said, I'm not going to church much of hypocrites. I said, good. I'm going to hell with them then. Amen. Amen. That way you'll be able to spend all eternity with them. Amen. Listen today. I know where I'm going. I know I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And I know, thank God, that God loves me. And I know, thank God, that I'm doing the things that I need to be doing. Amen. In serving Him and being true to Him and being faithful to Him. And He's faithful to us. Listen today. He's being faithful to you down through the years. Where in the world is your faithful? Amen. 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 People say, well, I just don't feel like going today. I don't think I'll go. <laughs> what 
what if God got up one morning and said, well, I don't believe they deserve any air and they just let me turn it on. Well, we'd be in a mess, wouldn't we? We'd be in a mess, we'd be gasping, our tongue would be hanging out like an old hand dog's tongue. They may say, Lord, what happened to the air that I breathe? Listen today. One of these days, God's love is going to stop. I'm going to say this. If you love God, show Him you love Him. If you love God, live like you love Him. There's people that talk all the time. There's people that come to me sometimes and say, boy, you ain't going to believe what so-and-so does. You know what I do? I take it with a grain of salt. Because you don't know whether to believe them or not. I figure if anybody go going to come to me and talk about somebody, as soon as they get away from me, they're going to talk about me. Or something. <laughs> yeah. They may say, I figure as long as my life is pleasing unto the Lord and I'm doing the things God wants me to do, I don't worry about other people and what they say. I know what I am. Amen. And I know what I got. And you ought to know who you are. And you ought to know what you've got. Amen. But what would happen today? What would happen today? Say within the next 60 seconds. The Lord would split the clouds of glory. And He would come after them that are saved. Would you still be saved? I'm going to tell you right now, if you got unfinished business with God, the answer to that might be yes. we got people living all kinds of different lifestyles that don't see nothing wrong with them. Read the book. Them lifestyles ain't going to hell. Them lifestyles ain't going in reading. One of these days, the love is going to stop. One of these days, it's going to end. Today, God loves you. Tomorrow, He might be your judge. Today, God is ready to forgive you. Tomorrow, they might not be no forgiveness. Today God is reaching out a hand saying, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Tomorrow, it could be the part from me. Oh, I never know. I give you years to get it right. I give you years to call up on me. I give you years walk in this race and you never would so today God's love runs out Christ comes on the throne as our judge and jury there ain't going to be no appeals there ain't going to be no let's just get a mistrial and let's do this thing all over again it ain't going to be nothing like that. This is the most serious thing. <coughs> How you treat Jesus Christ does not only affect, affect this life, it affects the next life. What you do with this man called Jesus Christ not only helps you through the battles down here, but it determines where you're going. I think people need to be serious with this Amen. man called Jesus Christ. You wear a sign on your back 24 hours a day saying, I'm a Christian. But if your life produces otherwise, I ain't going to believe that sign not for a second. Come on, preacher. Because your life 
church that you want. That's right, amen. And behind your closed doors That's right. at home proves who you are. The language you use on your sofa and the way you talk to your kids and your family proves who you really are. Amen. The life that you live where nobody else knows anything about proves who you are. It ain't always what you see is what you get. And a lot of people can paint a lot of pretty pictures. They come into church, they'll pray, they'll cry, and then they live like the devil when they get home. And behind them closed doors proves who you really are. <coughs> One of these days, God's love is going to stop. His judgment is going to begin. So I asked you a question this morning. With every head, I know this ain't been a popular father's name. And believe me, I won't preach something else anymore. But I want to ask you a question this morning. Where would you be at right now if God stopped loving? If there was no more mercy, and there was no more grace, there was no more invitations, there was nobody else left to mention the sweet name of Jesus to you. And love had run out. And judgment is setting in. Where would you be? Every head bowed, every Christian man and woman crying on the come back to the piano. I just want you to be honest with God this morning and honest with yourself. I wonder this morning, are they a one anywhere? By the uplift of hands, say, Preacher, if that would happen to me today, I'd be in a world of trouble because my life is in a mess and I need help. God bless that hand. Are they another? God bless that hand. Are they another? Say, boy, I, I need to get things right. I need to get things straightened up. I need things to get corrected in my life. If God had stopped loving me today, preacher, I'd bust hell wide open because my life is not ready. I am in no condition. The way my life is right now, there's no way that I could stand before God and hear Him say, well done, thy good and thy faithful child. And I want to get things right. Are they another one? Just by the uplift of hand. Just lift it up and take it right. Amen. <coughs> Father, dear Lord, today, God, we come to you, Father, with humble hearts, thanking you, Lord, for this day. God, we thank you, Lord, so much, God, for loving us, Lord. Father, we pray, God, take this message, penetrate our hearts, our minds, and our souls, Lord, and help us today, God, to get things on the right side of the fence and help us, Lord, to do the things, God, that are pleasing. Father, unto thee, and Lord, whatever's accomplished, dear God, will not fail. Father, to bow our head to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Father, for we ask it all in Jesus' holy and precious name we do pray. And amen. Let's all stand this morning.